Today, we continue our tour of Google Analytics reports. I know it seems like a lot, but Google Analytics really is fundamental. And if you don't have some mastery over it, it's basically like driving with your lights off in the dark. And although it can be a bit boring at first, it's very, very useful and very quick to master. I hope that by going through various reports and showing you my workflows with real data, you'll be able to repeat the same sort of process with your own website. As a prelude to showing you the content drill down report, I'm going to show some aspects of the structure of Oxbridge Notes. For one, it exists on multiple domains and subdomains. I'm on the Dakota UK here, but I can go to the Australian one and you can see this is ENAU, oxbridgenotes.com. And then the Canadian one is enca.oxbridgenotes.com. Okay, let's go back to the UK one first. On top of that, there's a certain structure to the website. Like if I go over here, I'm in T for Taxons Accounting. And then here, uh, BCL Law. So basically, this is a template page. It's kind of, and there will be many examples of kind of instantiations of that template, like the economics one. And then if I go in here, I'm viewing a particular product. It's under revision notes and then the product name. If I go back here, I can open up a different product and there are, you know, maybe a thousand or 2000 products. And then lastly, within each of these revision notes things, there are multiple samples. So I go in here and the URL for the product is there for that particular product. And then the URL gets extended with samples and then the name of that particular sample. And there are multiple samples. That's all the preamble you need. So here we're in the content drill down report of Google Analytics. You can find that under behavior, side content, content drill down. What this does is divide your page into multiple levels as they call it. You can see here at the first level, it's the subdomain or domain. So we have oxbridgenotes.co.uk with www in front, which just means my normal UK site www.oxbridgenotes.com, that's my US site. It accounts for 5% of my traffic, whereas the UK one accounts for 86% of my traffic. And the Australian site with 5%, the Irish version at 1.6%. So what this report does, or what it's strong at, is to kind of broadly sum up where your traffic is going. And this gives me an idea about my relative traffic performance in each of the countries I operate in, each of my subdomains and so on. Now let's, let's dive in further. Um, to the second level, page path level two. And it's easiest to understand this by just looking at the data. So we have revision notes, which corresponded to the particular products I showed you. Like one of these is a revision notes URL. And this captures all the possible revision notes URLs that exist within my website. So you can see here it's listing, there's only 10 listed here, but in fact, there's a thousand, uh, 1,247. So let me make that 100. You can check that out. Before I do that, actually, I'm going to go back up one level to level, or I need to go back twice because that just changed it from 100 to 10. Yeah. And um, so we have revision notes, then we have the taxons. And what's useful here is to get an overall picture for what percent of people, you know, maybe land on a particular or end up on a particular page in your website. And this might indicate where to put um, design budget and so on. And you also get some other figures like how much time do they spend on those pages? How often do they exit the website after checking out one of those pages? It looks like if people arrive on my tax or if people are on my tax on page, they're very unlikely to leave the website at that point, whereas they're much more likely to leave if they're on one of my product pages. So this is a strong page. I guess it's very transitional. You can have check out what's on offer. Let's go one level deeper and look at the possible products again. So looking at all the possible products I have under the, you can see up here, the revision notes level, I see that law trust and equity accounts for 6.45% of all my traffic. So given that there's 1,247 products, this one is taking a relative lion's share of the traffic. How might you use that information? Well, one way is if I'm creating a related products pop-up or whatever widget, within a page, then I might take these 10 products as the related ones and just pop them up. That'd be kind of a dumb way of doing it rather than dynamically, but it would do a pretty good job given that this accounts for a lot of my traffic. There's probably a high probability that any given user is interested in that stuff. The way to use this information would be in online advertising. They say that in online advertising, it's good to be specific. 
So perhaps if I were targeting the law market, I could say we have great trust and equity notes, land law notes, equity and trusts again, it's just a variant of the product, and great contract law notes. And this could be pretty compelling advertising since the average user seems to be looking for something along those lines. So imagine you have a multi-stage checkout on your website, as many websites do. Perhaps you gather email addresses in the first step, and then you let people select their payment option in the next step, and so on and so forth. How do you figure out which step is leakiest in terms of losing you the most conversions? That's where the checkout behavior analysis report comes in, which is found under conversions, e-commerce, checkout behavior. You can see here that of the 1,619 sessions that added products to cart in this time period, 1,151 made it to the payment stage, i.e. 70% of that amount, and then 916 actually ended up purchasing. They ended up having transaction data. And this figure is 56% of that figure. You can also see visualized here the relative dropout at each step. 70% drops out here, 76% drops out here. You can use this sort of data in order to decide which step in your checkout flow is optimal to optimize, i.e. where do you get the biggest bang for your buck? And considering that the cart step loses more people than my payment step, I would probably optimize there. And the setup for this report, unfortunately, is a little bit complicated in the sense that the Google Analytics documentation is all over the place on this particular topic. There are basically two aspects here. One is that you go into your view settings and you find e-commerce settings and then you add some funnel steps here. That's step one, that's the easy part. The more difficult part is the Google Analytics code you'll need. And it seems that depending on what type of Google Analytics code you have, for example, gtag or analytics.js, you have slightly different event data you have to send. For example, I see checkout step one here, whereas in this one I have action field step one. So I would advise you to just consult the latest docs for the kind of analytics integration you have in order to get this working on your website. Sometimes it's difficult to know whether or not you have a blind spot in your overall marketing strategy. Are you missing out on a certain category of traffic or overinvested in a certain type or are your bounce rates abnormally high or something like that? That's where the set of benchmarking reports come in. They're under audience benchmarking and there's channels, location devices. We're looking at the channels report right here. So first off, you select your industry vertical. There's lots to choose from. I'd say the closest for me is teaching and classroom resources. Then you select a region and that has country and also sub region. So if you're a very local business, for example, a pizza restaurant or something like that, then you can compare to within your region. And then you select the size of your website by daily sessions. Depending on what you choose here, it make your figures look really good. For example, if your website is large and you choose to compare against a tiny website, everything will look great. I'm choosing a range where I'm at the lower end of, um, but I think it's the most accurate range here. Now let's have a look at some of the data. So it's divided into the channel groupings we saw earlier. And you can see here that I'm very, very lopsided in the sense that everything is red, ex I am lower than normal, except with SEO where I'm better than normal. This might indicate to me, for example, that perhaps I should invest more in getting direct traffic or referral traffic or social traffic. I don't have these marketing arms at all, but perhaps this is the blind spot I have. Another useful thing to look at is behavior. How many pages does the average session look at? And I'm getting 1.79 versus uh, the average of four in organic. But in other areas, I'm quite good. Like in social, the sessions are very effective. I'm getting 3.61 instead of 1.94. This is a strong indicator that it should probably be investing more in social traffic. Then we have the average session duration. I'm doing better than average there. But my bounce rate is worse than normal, as you can see here. That's all I've got for today. See you next week.